Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over recursion in C++. So recursion can be confusing for those new to the topic. So basically in programming, we have two ways to repeat a set of code. And the first way is what you're already familiar with, and that is iteration. So this is using for loops and while loops, and this terminates when a certain condition is met. The other way is called recursion. And essentially, this is when a function calls itself. So when a function calls itself, it becomes a loop. And this terminates when a base case condition is met. So it's similar to iteration in that we are looping, except it's looping with functions calling itself with a different parameter. And each time it calls itself, that parameter reaches towards the base case. Without the base case condition, the recursion will never end. So we would have an infinite loop. And a function that calls itself is called a recursive function. And this entire concept is called recursion. Okay, so let's go over an example. In math, we have something called factorial, which is the product of all numbers from one to n. So in math, we denote this with an exclamation mark. So for instance, we have five factorial, this would be five with exclamation mark. And this is equal to the product of all numbers from one to five. So it'd be five times four times three times two times one. And this gives us 120. So let's write a function that will calculate the factorial of n. So this function is going to return an int, and we'll call it factorial, and it takes in an integer n. And then let's create a variable int, and we'll say result is equal to one. And in this case, I'm going to use a while loop instead of a for loop, just because I think it'll make understanding recursion a lot easier. So while n is greater than one, I'm going to do result times equal n, and then n minus equal one. And then at the end, I'm going to return result. Okay, so we're basically counting down. So we'll do five, then four, then three, then two, then one. Okay, so let's create some test cases. So I'm going to do C out three factorial is equal to factorial three. And then I'm going to copy and paste this. And let's change this to five and 10. And then over here, five and 10. All right, so now if I save and run the program, you can see three factorial gives us six. So that's one times two times three, which is six. Five factorial gives us 120 and 10 factorial gives us this big number, okay? And if I add another test case above it, let's say negative five, this should give us one. So we don't really have negative factorials. So by default, I'm going to have this be the same as zero factorial and zero factorial is one. Okay, so if I run the program, I expect factorial negative five to just be zero factorial, which should give us one. And here we have one. Okay, so basically, when we pass in negative five, this condition negative five is greater than one returns false. So we never run this while loop. All right, so now we have a factorial function, and I'm going to comment this out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to define another factorial function, and this time we will be using recursion. So let's do int factorial, int n. And the first thing we need is a base case. And the base case is basically a stopping condition. So in the factorial function that we wrote earlier, in this while loop, we had a stopping condition over here, which is n greater than one. Actually, this would be the continuing condition. The stopping condition would basically be the opposite of that. So it'd be n less than or equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a base case here. And basically the base case here would be if n is less than or equal to zero, I'm going to return one. So if I pass in negative five, this is going to return one. If I pass in zero, this is also going to return one. Now, if n is not less than or equal to zero, then I don't execute this condition statement. So I continue with the function. And here I'm going to return n times factorial of n minus one. So basically I'm calling the function again, and this time I'm passing in n minus one. So if I had factorial, of five, then this is going to give us five times factorial of four. 
and factorial 4 is going to give us 4 times factorial 3. So we end up with 5 times 4 times factorial of 3. And then we'll have 5 times 4 times 3 times factorial of 2, and so on, until we get factorial of 0. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get the same numbers. We get negative 5 factorial, this gives us 1, because this hits the base case. And 3 factorial, that gives us 6, 5 factorial gives us 120, and 10 factorial gives us this big number over here. Okay? So this is how we can use recursion to write a function that calculates the factorial of a number. Now what happens if I don't have this base case? So I'm going to comment this out. So since we don't have this base case, we're not going to stop at 0, and therefore we're not going to return 1. Instead, we're just going to have this chain of recursive calls, and it will go on forever. So what happens if I save and run the program? And as you can see, when we have negative 5 factorial, we get no output. Basically, we don't have any results, and that is because this factorial went on forever. And in fact, because we didn't have this base case, what ended up happening was it would start at negative 5, then it will call factorial on negative 6. So we had negative 5 times negative 6 times negative 7 times negative 8, and so on. So it just kept on going. Now, if I hover over here, you can see this command took 3.3 seconds. Basically, what ended up happening was we had something called a stack overflow. And basically, whenever we make function calls, we create a stack frame. All function calls go on the stack, and every time we make one function call, we add another stack frame. So basically, what happened was we kept on adding stack frames from our recursive function, and eventually we ran out of memory. So whenever you're writing recursive functions, you should always include the base case. Otherwise, if you don't have this base case, you're going to run out of stack memory, which is a stack overflow, and this is going to give us a segmentation fault. All right, so we have a factorial function that is written recursively, and we have a base case and the recursive call. So how does this work? And the best way to explain how recursion works is to draw it out. So here we have a call stack, and this is essentially the stack memory. And let's say I do factorial of 5. And just to simplify things, I will call this f of 5. Okay, so when I make this function call, we are going to use one stack frame, and this is f of 5. And this is going to return n times factorial n minus 1. So this is going to return 5 times f of 4. So what we need to do is add another stack frame. So now we have f of 4, and this returns 4 times f of 3. So we add that to the stack frame, and this is 3 times f of 2, and then we add that to the stack frame, and then this is 2 times f of 1, then we add f of 1 to the stack frame, and then we get 1 times f of 0. So we have f of 0 over here, and essentially, if we get 0, we return 1. So basically, once we get to a factorial of 0, we've reached our base case. And when we reach our base case, we return 1. So f of 0 is going to return 1, and we can remove this stack frame. And then f of 1 is going to return 1 times 1, which is 1. So we remove this stack frame as well. And then f of 2 is going to return 2 times 1, and we've removed this stack frame. f times 3 is going to return 3 times 2, which is 6, and we remove this stack frame. Then f of 4 is going to return 4 times 6, which is 24, so we remove this stack frame. And then finally, f of 5 is going to return 5 times 24, which gives us 120. And then afterwards, we can remove this stack frame. So that's how recursion works when we have a base case. Basically, we add on stack frames, and once we hit the base case, we trickle back down. Now, what happens if I don't have the base case? So if I don't have the base case, and I cross this out, well, we're going to have f of 0 return 0 times factorial of negative 1. So this will be 0 times f of negative 1, and then we'll call f of negative 1, which gives us negative 1 times f of negative 2, and so on. So basically, we're going to keep adding more stack frames to the call stack. 
and eventually we're going to run out of memory. So basically, we're going to keep on piling up the stack frames, and once we run out of memory, we don't have any more space to put the next stack frame, so it's going to overflow. For that reason, this is called Stack Overflow. And you might be familiar with the website called Stack Overflow, and basically, it's a website where people can post programming questions. So now hopefully you understand how recursion works with this factorial function, and why having a base case is very important. Because again, without a base case, we'll eventually run out of memory. All right, so that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.